Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today I just want to have a little chat with you all about this lot. These three. So we have Fecula Flyblown, awful, uh, Golgok the Butcher, also awful, and Sepsimus Plaguesworn. These are, of course, the worm spat for Warhammer Underworlds, which I thought, you know what, I should give it a go. I've not actually tried Underworlds at all, and this is a relatively small, simple project, he said, having decided to overcomplicate things for himself massively. Essentially, we took a look at the worm spat a while ago for the range review, and I really, really liked the models. They, they really well done. They're really nicely done. There's some horrible details on there, uh, one of which I I immediately removed. I'm looking at you, horrendous prolapse on Sepsimus. But I wanted to step outside my comfort zone a little bit when it comes to converting infantry characters, because the fact is that a lot of the stuff that I've done for this kind of size model, it's been power armor based. And there is frankly an absolute wealth of stuff out there to convert things with and to you know, like shoulder pad swaps and backpacks and helmets and it's something that I'm very used to doing and something that I've done for years and years and years but I've never really tackled anything I'd say like this before basically. What I wanted to do with these guys was make them a bit less Nurgle which might sound a bit weird but I kind of had these three models as multi-purpose things in mind, like for use in Underworld, for use in D&D, &D, as either things that the party have, well, they're all going to be things the party have got to fight, let's be honest, they look the part for that. And if I ever decide to expand them, having some sort of cool, like, Dark Souls-esque barbarian slash weird knight army would be really fun. That's a long ways down the line, I've got plenty of stuff to get done before then, but I figured it would be worth stepping out of that power armor based comfort zone and tank and dreadnought based comfort zone when it comes to uh, conversions try my hand at something a little bit a little bit different to what I'm used to I also then extended this to the paint job which wasn't really part of the plan to start with but then I, I I'd seen that Artis Opus had put a tutorial up about how to do uh, non-metallic metal with dry brushing, and I went, you know what, let's give that a go. Why not? It's like midnight, <laughs> I need to get up in the morning, so let's try something I've never tried before. Fine, sure. So I did. So, what have I actually done to these guys? Well, for Fecula Flyblown, there was not a huge amount that I did, actually. I clipped away and filed away the Nurgle iconography on her shoulder, used a bit of green stuff to give her some like some kind of boots like I'm really going for just like worn shoes kind of I chopped the top half of a staff off and put the weird like what's it called Can candelabra from the uh, the night haunt chain rasps stuck a little a couple of bells on there from I believe that's ooh what is that <laughs> there's a question empire flagellants that's it um, there's a, just a little a little bit of leather armor going over one wrist where there is a quite deeply carved Nurgle symbol that I wanted to cover up, which is from the Van Saar kit of all places. And I also thought it would be fun if she had like a weird kind of addition to her hair, like like a so that it covered her whole face, just making her look that bit more that bit more creepy and mysterious. So that's what I did. I need to file down the staff a fair bit more before she goes away for priming, but for the most part, apart from cleaning up a couple of mould lines, filling a gap, she's she's not looking too bad so far. I'm pretty happy with what I did with her, but I'm happier still with what I did to uh, Gul Gulgoch. Gul sure. He was way harder to try and de-Nurgle. I've already given him a bit of a file and a sand down. He's going to need a little bit more probably, but... That is something that's very fiddly. He's not glued at all. These are all like push fit models, so he can just be taken apart. He was in pieces until I started recording. And uh, yeah, so he, pretty similar to be honest, just clipping and filing away a bunch of Nurgle iconography, trying to fill in some of the holes in the axis so they're a bit less like uh, like Swiss cheese. I wanted to give him something that was a little bit different to Sepsimus, so he's still got his two axes and he's got the, I think it's some sort of like uh, like crossbow pistol, pistol crossbow or something, hand crossbow from, I think it's uh, Neve, Neve Black Talon, the, the Stormcast kit. 
He's got a little tilt shield because a set of summers had one and I wanted him to match in that respect. There's a few pouches on there. I like sticking a couple of extra pouches on stuff. It's always fun. Just kind of, I don't know, adds a bit of extra something to them. And uh, a lot of green stuff work to try and just bring down how completely messed up his stomach was. Like, it had intestines hanging out of it and I didn't feel that fit what I was going for. So, some rough green stuff work that needs to be filed and uh, filed and sanded a bit better. The... You'll be happy to know the little pouches that are covering a bit of a rough join. There's just a tiny tap and just a little smidge of blue tack in there. So they're not glued on yet. I didn't dare glue it on yet. Finally, Sepsimus. Now, Sepsimus actually had a fair bit more done to him in a way because I had to remove that prolapse, which I did. I clipped it off, gave it a bit of a file here and there, and then decided, well, I needed to put something on the back where it was because it looks super weird so he's got part of the, like the cloth from a chain rasp covering it up there's some green stuff to mold it into the like the back of his armor the join looked a little bit rough and it stuck out a little bit so i thought a, a fun thing to do would be to put some pouches on there give him a bit of like some supplies that he's got so that's what i did he's got some like space marine pouches on the side a little bit of cordial ornamentation on one bit he also has the uh, the tilt shield. I've cut off all the spikes from all of them as well, just to make them a bit more streamlined. I decided I really liked the way the little pouches looked, so I gave him some more on his other shoulder pad. Doesn't really make a huge amount of sense. I don't know what you keep in there, but I just liked the look of it. it the more I did to this to this guy, the more I did to Sepsimus, the more Dark Soulsy he looked. So I just kept going. So he's got his little tilt shield, a bit of chain hanging down to uh, to kind of match the the chain between his legs there. I also gave him the buckler from the Skeleton Warriors from, uh, from Age of Sigmar, and a random sword that I found. I wanted him to have a normal hand and have a sword rather than a spear, just because I really liked the look of uh, this particular sword. It's modified a bit. I've cut a load of spikes off the side and then filed it down, so it still looks a bit worn and a bit blunt, but it's not absolutely covered in spikes. I wanted it a bit plainer than that. Which also, of course, meant that he needed a different hand, because the other one, well, it's a tentacle, not a hand. So to replace with a sword, kind of had to give him a totally different end to that arm. And then I made things incredibly difficult for myself by deciding to do, well, to try for the first time, like, a non-metallic metal effect on his armour. And then I saw a picture of uh, of old, old uh, Gulgoch, Gotch, I, how do you even pronounce his name? The Butcher, the guy with the two axes, well, let's just call him the Butcher, which someone did where he had like a firelight effect on one side. And I really liked that, so I thought, well, I've done non-metallic metal on one side of Sepsimus, what if I, what if I had him like, like for display purposes, what if I made like just a little small diorama and they were stood around a campfire? That would be cool, because then I could try that on him. So I did. Now from directly looking on, I think it's a pretty solid effect. It's it needs a lot of work. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever tried it. Um, it's not the first time I've tried like uh, uh, like uh, object source lighting, but it's the first I've tried it as intense as this. I've done it before, but it's just been like a very light coat of whatever the color is, just to give the impression. This is the first time I've really gone for a like a pronounced kind of I guess almost like stylized version of it. It needs refining and practicing, but overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with it as a first approach. And from looking at him dead on, I think it's pretty effective. It feels like you have to be super looking at them from the right angle for non-metallic metal in the first place. Adding in like a fire effect on the other side has just made it even more angle dependent. So there are points at which it doesn't look great. There are points at which where I'm like, oh, okay, that looks pretty good. And then there are just... The perfect angle, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's worked. It's very dependent. All techniques that I need to get better at, and uh, things that I need to practice, but as a first attempt, not too bad. So yeah, this was almost just like a... I've never tried to do anything like this before, and I've never really steered out of my comfort zone with regards to converting smaller infantry models. It's always been about armour or power armour, which are, I find relatively easy to mess around with. These felt very different. I mean, I know Sepsimus is armoured, so it's a bit... It's, it's not quite a total change, but 
has a significant change when it comes to the other two, and even Septimus himself. It's not the kind of armor I'm used to modifying. Used to used to power, used to uh, Stormcast, and definitely not either of those. I've yet to work out how I'm going to paint um, the Butcher or Fecula Flyblown. I, I would say, if you've got any ideas in the comments as to how to tackle them, given that I went for non-metallic metal on Sepsimus, how would I do the others? I'm not entirely sure. Perhaps you can give me some ideas. Anyway, that's gone on way longer than I meant it to, but yeah, I just thought I would show you this small, <laughs> allegedly, um, Underworld's project that is just just a nice break from dry brushing endless necrons and uh, and doing irritating detail work on the Empress children. Just something a little bit different. Let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. Uh, I tried very hard not to go on massive tangents this time. I apologise for the times that's happened in the last few videos. I'll try not to do it as much going into the future. Yeah, let me know what you think. Feel free to subscribe if you would like. It would be very nice if you did, but it's entirely up to you, obviously. And uh, yeah, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games. You can use it to support the channel, all of that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.